<clears throat> just leaving Dollar General here in Brackettville, Texas. I'm going to go for a drive. Why? Well, I just got everything kind of re-squared away in my RV, and I want to check for rattles before I leave on my trip. That way I don't have to try to figure them out while I'm cruising on my drive, whatever, you know. This way I can get them taken care of. But anyway, it is a Thursday morning right now, 8.44 a.m., 48 degrees outside, gray skies. And uh, yeah, it's a, a nice fall day. Tomorrow will be, the high today is going to be 60. The high tomorrow will be 80 and on and on until summertime when it gets too warm, but I won't be here anyway. Oh, something else, I'll give you another update on that New Mexico State Park Pass stuff. Uh, it appears that most of those increases in the price and changes are gonna be for out-of-state people, for people who come in from out of, out of state and get to the State Park Pass uh, there's going to be some changes there in the daily rates, etc. But you can find it all out as it evolves online. So, this is Brackettville, Texas, and we are going to go take a drive. And I'm listening, listening carefully for rattles. I haven't heard any. Got gas, or I topped off my fuel tank. For it was 279, I believe, a gallon here and it's usually slightly higher than Del Rio, Texas here. And uh, here's a little, on the right hand side there, there's D&D Hardware. And man, I'm telling you, they got, if you need something in the way of hardware, I believe they have it, I guarantee you. But anyway, we're gonna be stuck here for a minute. This is kind of a long light. But yeah, I'm gonna be leaving on a trip on uh, probably Sunday morning uh, and go out west, slowly a around in a loop to Cloudcroft. Why? Well, uh, because it's what I want to do, obviously. And, uh, you know, the adventure never ends. You know, you just, I just continue to do what I do. Sometimes I feel like staying at my home bases for longer periods, but this time it has been a little shorter. I don't know. I got here back here in September uh, last year and, uh, you know, was here for a while. And then I took a trip down to Falcon Lake for about a month and, and uh, Choke Canyon. Uh, yeah, it was about a month. And then uh, came back to Fort Clark Springs. Been here a while. And now I'll peel out again, you know. And away we go, on and on and on. So, what else is new, guys? Not much. But I will say this. For you RVers out there, particularly you older types, you know, I know that sometimes you get frustrated and stuff, and, but I have to tell you, for me, uh, it is a better way of life than living in a sticks and bricks or a house, even a small home like I have, uh, 400 square feet. And uh, it's just, I don't know. I mean, of course, this is a very comfortable unit for me to travel in the class b rv that i have and it makes it nice i mean uh, you know why not you know why not basically live on the road uh, I, the frustration of living on the road is no different than the frustrations of living in a home you know things break things need to be repaired you know things need to get done it's the same way but this unit here the class b you know, you don't have to worry about leaks, you know what I mean? You know, if there's a leak, there's only a few spots that are open on the roof. And the windows, of course, are like car windows because it's a van. And uh, so a lot of the things you don't have to worry about. And the frame on this thing doesn't twist a lot like on a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. So you don't get those kind of strange leaks and weird places. And the roof on this thing is you know if you have a hail storm uh it'll put dents in it but it's not going to knock any holes in it uh, or damage it where you have to have it you know resurfaced so to speak but yeah so there's some real upsides to uh, the class b as far as driving comfort 
Uh, it's great, uh, much better than the Class C in my opinion. The Class C uh, for me was, uh, you know, you had to drive it. You know, you, you, you had to be paying attention because a gust of wind would, 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 would make your face pale, you know, your hands tighten up on the steering wheel. But uh, it was a good unit. I did enjoy it. Would I buy another one? I don't think so. Uh, I don't need one. This is fine for me. And uh, it's all I need. You know, the, the thing of it is, you got you got to get it situated for you. You know, like <clears throat> you know, this time, uh, you know, you everyone has a file drawer or file cabinet where they have their tax file, their house file, and all their other stuff. Well, I've got the same thing, but I live in I go to to New Mexico for five or six months, back to Texas five or six months. So you know, uh, I have to kind of take. Uh, a few files that I may need in, in either location, you know, like my income tax file, I need to file my income tax. I take my vehicle file and also my home base file uh, with me, both home bases. Why? Well, because, you know, I may decide to sell one or both at any given moment, and I'll have the file with me to get all that paperwork done. So what has that got to do with the price of turnips in Guatemala? Nothing. Why am I talking about it? Because I can't think of anything else. I mean, I'm, I'm digging, boys and girls. I'm digging. So, but it is a pretty morning to be, 48 degrees again, and, and no breeze, you know, just a gray sky. You know, that's what you call a fall day, you know, and that's what it is here. But it'll start warming up now. Uh, not quickly, but we'll be in the 80s in March, and then April, probably upper 80s, low 90s, and then May, June, July, all that rest of that, you know, where it goes, it goes up and up and up. Here in Texas, now in Cloudcroft, not so much. It's pretty comfortable there all summer. And I'm looking, well, I'm just looking forward to the trip. Why do I take these trips? Because, you know, like driving right now, going 40 miles an hour, not a bit of traffic. Uh, I'm listening carefully to hear, see if I hear any new rattles because I did shift stuff around quite a bit and uh, but I, car I carry uh, for the, here's a tip for you guys in our that drive your RV you know get you some of those uh, uh, washcloths at uh, Walmart they come in packages of 10 or 15 whatever they are for like three or four bucks and you can things that rattle small items and stuff you can wrap those things in those washcloths and, and that stops that crap or you can put them under or in between dishes and stuff and that stops that crap. Of course I only have one plate, one knife, one fork, one spoon, you know the drill there because there's just one of me and if I have company they better bring their own stuff, you know. And uh, but yeah it's I've got it pretty well done now guys. I mean this thing is it's a camping machine. It is. Now as far as boondocking, I don't do much of that anymore. Uh, and the reason is I don't care to. Uh, I like the comfort of having uh, electric and water. It, I could get by with just electric, fine. Uh, but, and I also have my Starlink now. And the Starlink draws about, the Starlink satellite device draws about 75 watts when you're using it. And, uh, or when you have it plugged in. And for, so for boondocking, you'd have to be aware of that. That's not a great big draw, but if you had it on overnight, it, it would be, you'd notice it. And, uh, but other than that, you know, we're just, you know, going back to the, some of the old places I've been to before that I enjoyed, and I don't know why. Uh, I, I look at the videos that I did while I was there, and I think, what did, what did I see here that, uh, you know, that I enjoy or felt comfortable. It's just a feeling I get, you know, that's the way I do my camping. You know, if I go somewhere and I feel uh, comfortable, you know, no stressors, you know, no uh, instincts telling me that there's danger around, then, then I'm, I, that's home to me for a while, you know, and uh, so that's the way I choose my sites and I don't really, uh, you know, again, if you go to places that have lakes, that have water, rivers or lakes, campgrounds, uh, then, uh, you know, they're pretty much going to be crowded at least on the weekends and in the summer 
all summer. Yeah. And we've got, of course, now we've got spring break here all across the U.S. for school age kids, colleges and stuff. And there'll be a lot of those out on the road doing their thing. And uh, does that impact camping? Sure, sure, a lot. You know, you'd be surprised. I mean, you, you can't even get a spot at, at uh, Hall of Relief State Park, you know, right now. And some of the other New Mexico State Parks, also Fort Davis, I was lucky to get three nights uh, in a row. I didn't, you know, I would have taken two, but you know, had three, three nights at, at a state park in Texas, uh, Davis Mountain State Park will cost you 50 bucks. That's if you have the Texas State Park Pass because you get one night, 50, half off, plus you get free entry fee. So three nights, 50 bucks, including all taxes and fees, that's 16 bucks a night, round, a night round numbers, which is very good. And then in New Mexico, of course, it's a lot less. And so, but, but the price of the camping uh, is not a real factor for me. I, I, I budget $600 a month for camping uh, fees plus gasoline, and that's more than enough to cover those two expenses because I rarely drive uh, very far. You know, I, mean, I do take some drives after I get to a campsite, but at 20 miles to the gallon now, that's not bad. And why am I telling y'all all this? Well, because I'm trying to do a video, guys. I mean, I'm trying to get it's up to publish, you know? And I'm so just, and, you know, some of this information may help somebody. I can't imagine who, who but it might be somebody that, that hears this. But yeah, it's, it's a nice day here in the Texas Hill Country. Uh, there's no fires here. There's no fires in this area of Texas that I'm aware of, and I'm looking around. I don't see any smoke. Uh, I don't see anything that would indicate we've got a, a brush fire nearby. However, if you started, if there was a brush fire here yeah, with any wind at all, uh, it would it would be it be it would be a biggie because they, they, you know, there's no fire departments around here large enough to work with that. And in fact, if the wind is blowing 20 miles an hour uh, in a brush fire. The, the fire department can't can't do much. You know they can they can get ahead of it and try to build these breaks and stuff. But uh, anyway, but I, if I, if I'm a fire expert, no. But I just have to get off on that tangent because I know we're having some brush fires in Texas, and we're going to turn around right here. This is where John Wayne built the set for the Alamo right here off to the right. But you can't go in there. It's owned by a family. It's private property now. And they've got an entrance gate that's got a fence and stuff. But, you know, they used to have a little booth there where you went through and paid your fee. But, yeah, this is the, yeah, straight ahead over that little hill to the left there, I think, is the old Alamo set, movie set. So, guys from... Uh, out on the road here listening for rattles and not hearing any which is great this is me saying thumbs up carpe diem adios bye bye buy anything you want anytime use the amazon link if you choose to and it's a free ride you know just click on the link go to amazon and get what you want it helps drink plenty of water stretch walk stand guard at the door of your mind and enjoy your life the best way you can you'll make your life an adventure what does an adventure mean just basically getting yourself out of your your daily bump and grind, you know, out of your uh, envelope or whatever you call it. And, uh, yeah, just get outside your thing and uh, see what's going on, and if you can. And if you can't, don't, don't get paranoid about it. You know, make make the best of the hand you're, you've been dealt. Adios, amigos. Stand guard at the door of your mind. Bye-bye.